Welcome to a tutorial on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to go over advanced data types in TwineScript. That is, data types more than numerical values, string values, or Boolean values. So to start, I've put together a little story that I'm going to run through that describes what I'm going to talk about. So to begin here, let's do a quick review of the set assignment macros and the if value macros. So usually when we think about using set, we think about setting some variable to some numerical value, or setting some variable to some string value, or setting some variable to a Boolean value, like the keywords true or the keyword false. And then using the if value macro, we test against that. Like if the Boolean value is true or false, and in this case, since it's true, we can show some text, or comparing numerical values. In our example here, numerical value is 5, and so 5 is less than 6, and we can show this text. And then finally, we can compare string values. So in our example, the variable string value is set to Dan, and if string value is Dan, and it is, we can show this last bit of text here, because Dan is Dan. So the first advanced data type I'm going to go over is an array. So in JavaScript, which TwineScript is based on, arrays are a collection of contiguous data. So they start from a position of zero, and they progress for their full length. So while normally we would use brackets to describe or just define an array in JavaScript, we cannot do that in TwineScript. Uh, brackets are already in use. Like we would use two brackets to define a link to a passage, or a single set of brackets, an opening bracket and a closing bracket, to define some link. So instead, we use the array value macro. And then we separate the values using commas. For example here, if we wanted to create an array with the value 1, 2, and 3, we can do that using this. We invoke the value macro, and then the values separated by commas. So we usually combine that with the set assignment macro to set some variable to be the value of an array. For example, we can set the va variable number array to the value array containing the numbers 1, 4, and 7. Then if we want to test if a value is in an array, we use those exact keywords, is in. So if we combine that with the if value macro, we can test something like the following. If we wanted to know if the number 1 is in the variable number array containing the value of the array 1, 4, and 7, we would do that here. So if 1 is in number array, which it is. But then if we wanted to write it the other way, and we wanted to know if an array contains a value, well, we can do that too. And we could write something like this. If a variable, that is an array, contains some value, we can do that. Usually it's up to the writer or designer's preference here. Is in and contains just are arranged differently when you write them, but produce the same value. Either true if some value is in an array, or if an array contains some value, or false if some value is not in an array, or if an array does not contain some value. So the second advanced data type I'm going to talk about is a set. So a set is a little bit different than an array. Instead of having numerical properties, that is some progression of position from 0 to 1 to whatever length, it doesn't really have that. Sets should also have unique values, but TwineScript is not going to check for that. So if you want to create in a set, for example, with the numerical values 1, 1, and 1, you're welcome to do that. However, it gets a little bit confusing when you check for that. So try to keep in, keep in mind that sets should have unique values. But then again, it's totally up to you, and TwineScript is not going to enforce that. To create a set, though, we use something like we did for an array, but we use the macro data set. 
we also separate the values using commas. Again, so in this right here example, a data set containing the string Dan, the string Fred, and the string Bob. So also like in arrays, we can use the keywords is in to test if a value is in a set. So for that, we use the construction similar to like we used with arrays. If we wanted to know if the string Dan is in example set, we would construct it like this, using the if value macro and testing if the string Dan is in some variable that is an array. We can also use contains like we did with arrays. If we want to know if some example set here contains a string Dan, we can also write that the same way. And again, like with arrays, using is in or contains is completely up to the author or designer. Both, like I mentioned with arrays, work the same way and are just written to conform to whatever preference you may have. So the final advanced data type I'm going to go over is a map. So maps are different than arrays and sets. Maps are built up of key value pairs. That is, in a map, a key is mapped to some value. So if we want to know what that value is, we have to know what the key is to reference it. And like in other data types in TwineScript, we also create maps using a special macro, in this case, data map. However, unlike an array or a set, maps are defined in sets of key value pairs, like I mentioned before. For example, if we wanted to create a map containing health and strength, we would define it like this. We would say the string health is mapped to 4 and the string strength is mapped to 6. And we would write it health comma 4 strength comma 6. And like I said, that would map the string health to 4 and the string strength to 6. And then again, we combine this with the set assignment macro to set some variable to be the value of that map, that data map. For, ex for example, we would work like this. We can set the variable example map to the value of the data map, health map to 4 and strength map to 6. So to test for a value within a map, it's a little bit different than it was with an array or even a set. Map values are referenced using a possessive form of the variable, the apostrophe s, to check if a value is in a map. We also use the name of the key, because maps are composed of key value pairs, to check for some value. For example, if we wanted to know if the value 6 was in the map and we knew the key was health, we would write it like this. If the variable example maps health is 4, we would write the value macro like this to test that. Notice here that we're not using quotes around the key when we're writing it within a value macro. Although we do need the quotes to define it or describe it, if we're testing for some value in a value macro, especially with an if or an else, we don't use quotes. But we do use this possessive form, this apostrophe s, on the variable containing the value of the map. So what does this all look like in code? Well, it's not too terribly different than the way I described it as I was going over each passage. At the beginning of each passage, I set up the example I was going to talk about here. And I have the three set assignment macro statements. We're setting Boolean value to true, numerical value to five, and string value to Dan. Then in each case, I use the if value macro to test them. If boolean value is true, if numerical value is less than 6, and if string value is Dan. So for an array, I did a very similar thing. I set up an array here at the very beginning, set the variable number array to the value of an array containing 1, 4, and 7. 
Then, in the section that describes how to test is in or contains, I set it up that way. So we see in practice that if a value is in an array, we can test that, or if an array contains some value, we can test that as well. And then for sets, it looks the same way. We can set a value variable, in this case example set, to the value of the data set, Dan, Fred, and Bob. We can also, as, as I mentioned, create a set that all have the same value. In this case, the <laughs> greatly named variable blah uh, is set to the value of the data set, Dan, Dan, Dan. And again, TwineScript is not going to check for that sets are most useful if they have unique values. And then as I mentioned with an array, so you can check for that. So if the value in this case, the string Dan is in the variable example set, we can do something. Or if we want to know if the set contains something, in this case if the variable example set contains a string Dan, we can do something. We can show some text as I did an example here. And then in maps, it works the same way as it did in the other passage. I start with the example that I then use to talk about in the passage. We can set the variable, in this case, example map, to the value of a data map. Health map to 4, strength map to 6. And then again, to test for that, we use to possessive, the apostrophe S, on the end of the variable to check if, in this case, the variable example map key health is the value for. And again, we don't use quotes when testing the key in a value macro. We just write it. So we combine it with the possessive and non-quotes for the key. And so there you have kind of a qu very quick overview of the advanced data types in TwineScript, the arrays, the sets, and the maps. In each case, too, we use a special macro, a value macro for each one. For arrays, it's array, and then for sets, it's data set, and for maps, it's data maps. And then again, for arrays, when we define them, we use a series of commas, like 1, comma 4, comma 7. And then sets, we do a similar way. We can have sets of the string Dan, comma, the string Fred, comma, the string Bob. And then in maps, since they are pairs of key values, we set whatever it is, comma, it's, what, some key, comma, its value, some key, comma, its value. Always in sets of pairs. And so you, there you have kind of a, a very fast overview of the advanced data types. In practice, uh, as you might have noticed, maps tend to be better if you're going to have things like character stats or something like that, where you're, you want to know a name of something, like a character strength set to some number. Uh, sets are usually good if you have some finite collection, like a number of weapons or something like that. And then arrays are often useful for some sets of numbers or some finite collection that you're going to compare against. But again, just like a number of things in Twine, you can use them however you'd like that best defines how you see the world and how you would like to create these things. The same with for arrays and sets, if you would like to use is in or contains. All depends on your preferences. Thanks for watching.